that we have sort of a, a so, one so hour school lesson. Yeah. Our narrative, okay, our narrative takes place in uh, a one hour school lesson. We have two scenarios. I'm going to take you through the one that's in the US. And it starts with the teacher coming in. Um, we have a math class and he um, wants to teach the kids multiplication. So we have three types of kids. Um, we have one type that's really good at math, then a group that's okay, they can do it, and one that's challenged, and then they start doing their tasks. And the one group is actually bored because they're ready so quickly, the second one fiddles around a bit, so right, and the third one struggles, and then we have this point of stasis where nobody is actually happy. Teachers are frustrated, kids are not happy. Then there's this new boy in class, he came to um, the US from India with his father who's a programmer and um, he has this device and he introduces that app uh, for magic math solutions to the kids in his class so they all gather around him and, um, and are totally interested uh, in, in what he's doing there so he explains what Vedic math is all about and what you, how you can use this device um, to solve those problems that the kids were so bored about when the teacher tried to um, teach them. Um, which also teaches them a bit about the paradox of a globalized world where actually um, the stereotype of the Indian boy <laughs> um, is a bit flipped around. Um, so we have a role change here. Um, the teacher just steps back, sees, wow, they're really excited about this, this is awesome, this is what teaching should be like. So he observes what they're doing and they're coming to, um, to solve these problems. The student becomes the instructor, instructor for um, a period of time and introduces a new learning aid. Um, shift in archetype. The shift in archetype. Um, the, the lesson continues. This could be the lesson continues or we have another lesson. This could be. It sparks this idea of, hey, that, that, there was something there. It's something worked. What else can we do now? Exactly. So the teacher jumps in with his pedagogical knowledge um, to create an experience for the kids where the kids um, also can buddy teach each other, can play out their strengths, but are also challenged to get out of the comfort zone and do things that they need to train better. So um, we can have that either in the physical world where they really go out um, and do a scavenger hunt with GPS or they do that in a virtual world or just in their classroom. Um, but the basic idea is that the kids split up into different groups uh, and they have to coordinate their actions um, with mobile devices where one group would get a recipe and would inform the other group what kinds of ingredients they need to get and a third group with kinds of pots and pans and whatnot. Um, and each group they would, need to have. so each group uh, inherently would have people that were doing, performing skills that they weren't normally um, uh, be, comfortable with. be comfortable with. Yeah, right. exactly. The other key point is the cultural difference as well. That, you know, that in terms of all the tasks and what they're doing, there's very, very different impetus in sure. how they're doing stuff. Sure. Yeah, so what we have here is a um, buddy teaching system where they collaborate, where they um, not only talk about m talk via mobile devices, but they also use them as recording devices um, for evaluation and assessment purposes. So that's where we have the uh, feedback loop, the monitoring for the teacher um, to actually then control um, what's happening. And then themes emerge around um, eating better. Exactly. We have, um, th yeah, this teaches a lot of things, not just math, but also eating better, so nutrition, uh, math, and dealing with money um, and organization problem solving. And stories emerge out of that because there are examples and experiences that emerge. So, for example, eating better as an experience becomes a new story. And that's, and when they all come back together, they yes. really also enjoy the individuality in the collective. Correct. Because they all had their tasks and achievements, and then they come together, and what they create is actually a common, a commons, <laughs> a communal experience, um, which is not only, which was facilitated by, um, also by digital devices, so they learn digital literacy. I could have added that here, by the way. That's okay. Um, so that's a pretty big uh, yeah, uh, pretty evolution, big right? 
Um, and then they sit together, they eat it, they rate it, and this is where the sensory experience comes back into play because they compare the taste, the smell, the memories, and they realize that the individual perception um, can be different, although they have the same experience. Correct. And, and, so, and so now, the aspirational levers that we started with have now become inspirational levers, and we can take those learnings for a new instance. So we take that intelligence, those data inputs and throughputs, and we start a new. Oh, right at the beginning. And, the, right. and that's the iterative process. That's the iterative process. process. That's right.